President Trump is demanding $5 billion from U.S. taxpayers to fund the wall, which is weird, because during the campaign, he might have mentioned once or twice another idea <laughs> for where the wall money would come from. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Mexico, Mexico, Mexico is going, going to pay, pay for the wall. The wall. Mexico, Mexico is going, going to pay, pay for the wall, wall. 100%. Who's going to pay for the wall? The only thing worse than one Trump is many Trumps. <laughs> Mexico's gonna pay for it. That was Trump's signature catchphrase. More than any other catchphrase, more than you're fired, more than make America great again, even more than don't tell my wife about this. <laughs> but we, we never should have actually believed that Mexico was going to pay for the war. Because every time someone asked Trump how Mexico would pay, he had a completely different explanation. There will be a payment. It will be in a form, perhaps a complicated form. One way or the other, Mexico is going to pay for the wall. That's uh, right. Uh, it sir? may be through reimbursement, but one way or the other, Mexico will pay for the wall. The wall will pay for itself on a monthly basis. We're working on a tax reform bill that will generate revenue from Mexico that will pay for the wall. We have a trade deficit with Mexico of $58 billion. All I have to do is start playing with that trade deficit, and believe me, they're gonna pay for we the wall. They may even write us a check by the time they see what happens. <laughs> Obviously, they're not gonna write a check. It's gonna be paid for by Canada, by the way. It's gonna be paid for, maybe I'll get Canada paid. It's gonna be paid for by Mexico. Wait, what? <laughs> you know, Donald Trump is truly a legend. Instead of admitting that he misspoke, he'd rather try and make Canada pay for the wall. He's just like, yeah, Canada's gonna pay. I mean, yeah, actually, Canada's gonna pay. I might make them pay for the wall. And shame, Canada, Canada's so nice, they'd probably do it. They'd be like, um, this is not really about us, but I guess we'll pay, eh? <laughs> also, what did that mean when he's like, the wall will pay for itself monthly? <laughs> Made it sound like America's gonna go to the wall and be like, you got our money wall? <laughs> Today, the president spent time at the border, checking out the world's largest Lego project. President Trump is in the air on Air Force One, headed to California, where he will get a first-hand look at eight border wall prototypes. The round piece that you see up here, or you see more clearly back there, the larger it is, the better it is, because it's very hard to get over the top. It's really deterrent from getting over the top. Who would think? Who would think? But getting over the top is easy. These are like professional mountain climbers. They're incredible climbers. So, so wait. Mexicans are rapists and professional mountain climbers? <laughs> I feel like this guy is just inventing new stereotypes now. You know, if there's one thing I know about those Mexicans, they love their mountains, yeah. <laughs> Almost as, uh, as much as Egyptians love kayaking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and this was a slick move, just by the way. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, you know Trump went to the border today because it's Taco Tuesday. Nice move, Mr. <laughs> President. Someone was probably like, Mr. President, you know we can have tacos on other days. He's like, no, no, I respect their culture. I respect it. We all know that Trump went to Southern California to visit his favorite and smartest child, the wall. <laughs> all right? But what uh, not many people noticed was this fascinating new development. Federal, state, and local authorities have been protecting those prototypes with fences, concrete barriers, and security cameras. That order coming straight from the Trump administration. Okay, now this shit has gone too far. <laughs> Trump's now building a wall to protect his wall? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. The wall is the protection. That's like having a bodyguard for the Secret Service. He's like, no, Mr. President, no, Gary. <laughs> Like, what a time to be alive. The wall has its own wall, and the president has his own president. This is insane. <laughs> I mean... I think... I think Trump's just gonna keep building walls until he can get Mexico to pay for one of them, you know? He's just like, okay, how about this one? No? All right, how about the smaller one? No? Do you guys just wanna buy this Wall Street DVD? Yeah? <laughs> President Trump decided to plow forward on proving his case for a border wall. So today, the commander-in-chief put on his travel Barbie outfit and flew down to the southern border to get a first-hand account of the situation. And while he was there, he gave us all a drunk history lesson. They say a wall is medieval. Well, so is a wheel. A wheel is older than a wall. And I looked, and every single car out there, even the really expensive ones that 
the Secret Service uses, and believe me, they are expensive. I said, do they all have wheels? Yes. Oh, I thought it was medieval. The wheel is older than the wall, you know that? And uh, there are some things that work. You know what? A wheel works and a wall works. You know, if, if a football player got up after a tackle and started talking like that, the trainer would be like, uh, we need to get you to the locker room now. Your brain is not okay. And just by the way, I, don't even, I can't believe we have to say this. If there are any kids watching that are gonna use this on a history test, walls are actually much older than the wheel. <laughs> Right, 6,000 years older than the wheel. Like, back in the day, cavemen had walls. So I guess people should stop calling Trump a Neanderthal because a Neanderthal would know that. <laughs> Hashtag not my Neanderthal. Now, uh, after putting the president's word through Google Translate, I think, I think what, what he's trying to say is that just because the wall is old technology doesn't mean it's not gonna be effective. Right? The only problem is, since walls have been around for so long, people have had centuries to figure out how to get through them. The president in the Oval Office address and his administration have been pushing this idea now of this, a steel slat barrier, which is already in use down here uh, along the southern border. We know from DHS testing uh, over the course of the last year that all of President Trump's prototypes were breachable in some way. But now for the first time, NBC News has exclusively obtained a photograph of the steel slat barrier style border wall design that was clearly cut through uh, with what we are told is a household saw. Okay, okay. Now you laugh, but to be fair, to be fair, you can't just get through with a household saw, okay? You also need some immigrant can-do work ethic. Because <laughs> let me tell you, because let me tell you, I've tried, I've tried sawing before, and that shit takes forever. <laughs> After five minutes, I was like, forget it, I'm just gonna bury the body in one piece. Like, <laughs> actually, it's so hard to saw through that level of steel that I think if a Mexican manages to saw his way into America, we should just give that person a job. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, just hire them. In fact, here's my pitch, here's my pitch. That should be how you do merit-based immigration, right? <laughs> However they manage to get in should just be, like, the skill that you use to your advantage in America. If you saw through, you work in construction. Go, straight away, straight away. <laughs> if they climb over the wall, you're a firefighter now. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and then all you guys running away, we'll see you on the Olympic team! <laughs> USA! USA! <laughs> USA! <laughs> You, uh, no, no, you, S.A., you, S.A. <laughs> now, now, you, now you'd think, you'd think, you'd think the news that you can just saw through a steel wall would be devastating news for Trump. But apparently, he already knows about this, and he's not concerned. There are pictures this morning showing steel barrier wall being sawed straight through. What good is a steel wall if they can saw through it? There's... Nothing that can't be penetrated, but you fix it. But it's a very difficult thing to do. But that's a wall, and they have other walls. We have many walls under consideration. Even concrete. There's acid that can go through concrete. Don't give them more ideas. What are you doing? I didn't even know that was possible. You're gonna build a wall and then tell everyone how to get through it? Trump would be the worst bank robber ever. This is a stick up, but I've got weak wrists. If you hit me right here, the gun will fly out. It's just gonna fly out right here. But look, I get what he's saying. Again, I get it. Even if a wall isn't 100% impenetrable, it's still better than nothing. And America's gonna need all the help it can get because the way Trump tells it, things on the border are about to get nuts. Here's the story. There is another major caravan forming right now in Honduras. And so far, we're trying to break it up. But so far, it's bigger than anything we've seen. Wow, another caravan. It's so convenient how whenever Trump needs to win something, a big scary caravan is always coming to kill us all. Because <laughs> first it was the midterms, and now it's the shutdown. Like, I feel like if Trump isn't careful, he's gonna run into a boy who cried wolf situation, you know? Someday, there is gonna be a big caravan full of ISIS drug dealers and Shreks pouring over the border. <laughs> and Trump will be like, there really is a caravan this time. And we'll be like, whatever, old man. Ah, oh, the Shrek's eating my face! <laughs> the government shutdown is now on day 31. 
And since a majority of Americans are blaming President Trump for the stalemate, this weekend, the commander in peach offered Democrats a compromise. <laughs> The president offered protection from deportation for some refugees and immigrants brought here by their undocumented parents for three years, that in exchange for his original $5.7 billion wall funding demand. The White House wall language is also softening from this campaign roar. We're going to build a wall, folks. Precast concrete, going very high. To this downsized description. This is not a 2,000-mile concrete structure from sea to sea. These are steel barriers in high priority locations. You know, when Trump said he was a master negotiator, I didn't believe him, but now I see it. Because you realize, since the shutdown, the Democrats haven't budged, but every day he's come out and negotiated himself <laughs> further away from what he originally wanted, right? Every single day. First, first he said it was a concrete wall. And then he said it's just made out of steel slats, and now it's only a certain section of the border where you need it. Like, Nancy Pelosi's just sitting there silently, and Trump is wearing himself down. He's like, I want a wall. Okay, Nancy, I'll take a fence. <laughs> oh, you're playing hardball. How about a two-foot baby gate? <laughs> Nothing, just give me one slat with a sign that says no. <laughs> Democrats and Republicans in Congress are still working towards a deal on border security. And right now, they agree on a lot of things, but the biggest sticking point is wall or no wall. And today, the president stepped in, saying he doesn't want any of these shady politicians calling it a fence or a barrier or any of that trash. A wall is a wall. You should call it a wall. Yeah. By the way, who are these shady politicians who are trying to call the wall something else? We don't use the word wall necessarily. We'll call it a barrier instead of a wall. The barrier, the wall. Call it whatever you want. I don't care what you call it. You can call it a barrier. Whatever they'd like to call it. I'll call it whatever they want. A steel wall, or you could call it a steel fence. Or a slat fence. They can name it peaches. I don't care what they name it. Okay, can I just say, can I just say, if the wall is called peaches, then I think we should build the wall. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. Because peaches the border wall is the most adorable thing <laughs> I have ever heard. Like, you call a wall peaches, it takes away all the stigma, right? Peaches isn't xenophobic. Peaches isn't racist. Peaches is just a wall trying to do wally things. It's peaches. <laughs> yeah. Like, I bet if you called the border wall peaches, even drug smugglers wouldn't want to breach that wall. They'd be like, hey, man, we need to get through the wall. Pass me the sledgehammer. I'd be like, no, cabron, I'm not taking a hammer to peaches, man. <laughs> what do I look like, an animal? We don't need to do this, man. Besides, most drugs are smuggled through legal ports of entry anyways, man. Don't you watch Rachel Maddow? Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> President Trump's border wall. It was his number one campaign promise, but now Trump can't find anyone willing to pay for it. Mexico refused to pay for it. Congress refused to pay for it. He tried to put it on Jared's credit card, but couldn't figure out how the chip works. <laughs> I was like, sir, you're pulling it out too soon. He's like, well, I don't know if this machine is on the pill. I'm not getting trapped again. I don't want another Eric. And so on Friday, on Friday, the president had no other choice but to take emergency action. In the Rose Garden, the president did what he had long threatened to do, declaring a national emergency to get billions of dollars Congress wouldn't give him to build his border wall. Now the battle moves to the courts, with challenges coming from border states, landowners, and others, and they're already pointing to this stunning admission. I didn't need to do this, but I'd rather do it much faster. Wait, hold up. <laughs> so Trump admitted? He didn't need to declare an emergency. He's just doing it to save time. That sort of negates his entire argument. It would be like a pilot coming out of the cockpit with a parachute saying, look, I don't have to open the emergency door, <laughs> but we're right over my house and I don't want to fight traffic. <laughs> Thank you for flying Spirit Airlines! <laughs> but look, you can argue about it, but Trump clearly thinks that Mexicans coming over the border is a national emergency. And so in response, America has to build a wall, which is a very gradual response to an emergency. Just like, sir, they're invading. Should we mobilize our tanks and call in airstrikes? No, no, no. Bring me your finest bricklayers. <laughs> in three to five years, they'll regret invading us. So look, Trump knows 
that this isn't the end of the border wall fights, right? Because it's, it's a national emergency, uh, this declaration will be challenged in the courts. And we know he knows this because he wrote a song about it. We will have a national emergency and we will then be sued and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there. And we will possibly get a bad ruling and then we'll get another bad ruling and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court and hopefully we'll get a fair shake and we'll win in the Supreme Court, just like the ban. They sued us in the Ninth Circuit and we lost and then we lost in the appellate division. And then we went to the Supreme Court and we won. Okay, that was super weird. Why is he talking like that? It sounds like he's being auto-tuned, but it's very addictive. I don't think I can stop now. Somebody help me. <laughs> but, but as crazy as his delivery was, I think we should at least be thankful that he used it to talk about the wall and not like a natural disaster. Imagine if he whipped that out for the first time after like a giant earthquake, you're like, there was this big earthquake, lots of people were trapped, we're gonna do our best, but expect the worst. <laughs> I'm not saying move on, but even if your husband has survived, his face is probably smushed and all gross. <laughs> Moving on to my favorite story of the year, and possibly my favorite story in my entire life. The concertina wire, or the razor wire, used to reinforce the U.S.-Mexico border is being stolen and sold by Tijuana residents for protection due to the city's high crime rate, according to officials. Some homes in the area were also seen with the same razor wire added for an extra layer of protection, but residents refused to say where they got the material. <laughs> Oh no, I'm sorry guys, this is insane. You heard that right, Mexico is stealing the wall. <laughs> oh man, oh man, I wish I could have been there when Donald Trump saw this story on the news. Knowing him, he probably would be like, they did what? Nancy, I'm gonna need you to spot me another $8 billion. We're gonna need another wall to protect the first one. And I mean, now, if, if they're stealing razor wire for their houses, they might as well just steal the whole wall next, right? Because no one's ever thought of that. It was like, America will build a wall. No one ever thought Mexico will steal it. <laughs> like, Mexicans will be showing off their new home security system, like, I built a wall around my house, and Donald Trump paid for it. <laughs> At this rate, at this rate, Trump is just gonna end up building all of Tijuana up, you know? <laughs> they, they're gonna start putting in requests from Mexico. They'll be like, you know what's really good for keeping us out, Senor Trump? Yeah, garage doors, man. <laughs> you should put those at the border, the ones that fold. Yeah, they scare us. Almost as much as patio furniture, man. 